Hello Gamerholics and welcome back to Let's Talk Gaming and today I have something very special for you guys. A few weeks ago I got invited to the LEGO Star Wars press tour at the Warner Bros. Studios in Amsterdam and there I had the opportunity to interview Graham Goering, the lead story designer behind LEGO Star Wars The First Awakens. So uh, I've lined up this interview for you guys and I hope you enjoy it. Their cannons will be in range soon. You can't miss them, so don't miss them. <laughs> So let's start with the first question. Uh, you're the lead story designer, so I'm wondering how does your day uh, at work look like? What what do you do when you get to work? Is that think about, yeah, the world will make uh, this character talk to this character or...? Uh, well, I mean, it depends what part of the project we're in. I mean, in the early stages, it's just, it's just writing. It's mm -hmm. reading the design documents um, and writing dialogue for them and then running that by the designers to see if anything's changed. Um, and then later on, we get to the recording sessions, and so I'm preparing documents for the recording sessions. I might be Skyping into a session that's recording in New York or Los Angeles. Um, so I might be there, you know, working different hours. Um, or I might be, you know, jetting down to London to do a recording session there. And then once we've got the dialogue, it's a case of getting it into the game. Mm -hmm. So then you have, uh, it's very different. It's, it's a case of um, cooperating with our, our brilliant sound engineers and you know, writing up bugs and documents that say, you know, play it here, and but don't play it if this line is played, and if they do things in a different order. Um, yeah, it's it's quite it's 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 a creative, but it's also a very technical role as well. And sometimes I'm spending time writing tools to help with the uh, to help with um, the writing process as well. So yeah, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, really. Yeah. Does this mean you get uh, information on the story of, uh, for example, Star Wars: uh, Force Awakens before anyone else gets it? Uh, I don't know if it's before anyone else gets it, but I mean, obviously, we need to know about what the plot is mm -hmm. before. You know, before the movie comes out, uh, and that's—I mean—that's an in, you know incredible that they entrust us with that that information. Probably and because it's top secret until the movie oh, comes out. Oh, you know, I mean, proper—I mean, it's proper top secret. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's it. You know, watermarked with your name so that you can't you know do anything. It's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 a weight of responsibility that we feel. But it's, you know, what's cool is that even though you know we had access to things early, the first time I saw the movie was in the cinema when it came oh. out. Which is which is lovely because that's the way to see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was wondering how uh, how much freedom do you get? Do you have to stick to the to the story as Lucas and Disney give it to you, or do you have some some freedom to to do side stories, side uh, things? Well, I mean, obviously, with regards to you know the main more movies plot, we mm -hmm. keep very you know we stick to that. We might we might cut out little bits for reasons of timing because we're telling like a sixty minute cutscene story as opposed to a two hour movie. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, you have to make edits there. Um, and obviously we have little background jokes happening and stuff like that that, that sort of, you know, um, are a little bit irreverent. But then we have, you know, a bit more freedom with that and new adventures that feed into, um, into the game. We have these six new adventure levels um, and they're telling bits of backstory. And so mm -hmm. we came up with those in conjunction with LucasArts and we had a little bit more sort of freedom there. And in terms of writing the actual dialogue, I have, you know, uh, an awful lot of freedom because I know that it's going to, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be passed via, you know, LucasArts, and and they're going to make sure that everything is, you know, right. But um, yeah, uh, it's it's amazing that you know I'm working on what is the biggest franchise in the world. Mm -hmm. that, that you know we have, I think they they trust us. They know that we love it. We're not going to do anything that angers them, and so we do have a surprising amount of freedom there. Did you did it already happen that you wrote a part of the story which? should appear in the next movie? No, 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 no. I mean, no, no, there's nothing like that, obviously. I mean, when it comes to, you know, generating that new stuff, that is, that's their purview. Um, but uh, no, I, I, you know, I, we've just written our backstory stuff, but, you know, like I say, an amazing amount of freedom within, you know, that world. And with our, you know, our silly little side missions that we have in, in all the free play hubs, mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a lot of freedom there to write silly little things. Uh, now we all know that uh, Lego and Star Wars appeal to a broad audience from children to uh, grown-ups to yeah. even elderly people. How did you translate that into the game? I think um, the, the main thing to do, because obviously the, the movie has you know, quite sort of some dark scenes, obviously. There's, there's a, a, a fateful encounter between Han and his son, which, you know, it's, it's something that we have to deal with in uh, a game which is you know ostensibly for people of all ages so we have to be very careful to find a way to to honor that story mm -hmm. um, to take Han out of the narrative but do it in a way that isn't gonna you know disturb any younger children who are playing and so that's our, our cutscene team are amazing at that they've been doing it for years they always find a way 
of you know making sure that no one really dies. You know, when when uh, in the, the Jurassic World game when the T Rex ate Donald Gennaro, mm -hmm. um, you opened its mouth and he was cleaning its teeth with a toilet yeah. brush. They you know they find a way to kind of juxtapose maybe a sinister scary scene with something funny so that you know the kids can really enjoy it and they won't be too scared. That's one way to put humour into the game as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, which is, I think, what we are really known for, is that irreverent, fun sense of humour. But I also noticed uh, during gameplay that you added some features which will allow uh, even smaller children to complete the game if necessary. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Some dialogue which will guide them. Oh yeah, yeah. Because well, you know, whenever whenever the people, whenever the kids are, or, or anyone is playing through the level, if you know if they get a bit stuck, sometimes the characters will say something which will sort of point them in the right direction. Yeah, but I don't see a blaster turret around here. Build one. Sure, why not? Or we have these new multi-build puzzles, and if you build things in the wrong order, they'll go, oh no, I need to do this thing first. Or another character might, you know, tell them what, uh, you know, what they need to do. We don't have enough cover here! <laughs> Shoot the fuel cell! And the other thing is that, you know, we have this new blaster battle gameplay, mm -hmm. and um, although, you know, you can play it almost like a traditional third-person shooter, sort of ducking out of cover and taking shots, um, if, if you're actually playing, you know, a younger child, if they keep ducking out of cover, it always pinpoints one of yeah, the enemies for them. So you can, you know, duck out, take a few shots, go back into cover. Um, but it's still really exciting and fun. Uh, um, so, yeah, I mean, we're very mindful of the fact that, you know, we're making games for, you know, uh, people of all ages. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't want to exclude anyone. Uh, do you already know the next game which will be a Lego game? Will that be uh, Rogue One or something completely different? Or, or uh, I mean, I obviously have to know what I'm working on next, but that's not something I could discuss because uh, I, would be, I would be shot into the sun. Okay. Uh, um are you a gamer yourself? Or oh yeah, no, massive gamer. Yeah. So, and if you, were, what's your favorite game? If uh, you don't have to pick the Lego games, of course. If I don't have to pick the Lego games, then uh, I'm a massive fan of the Dark Souls series. The uh, Dark Souls. Oh, yeah. I, I love those games. They have got their hooks into me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's quite a nice game. It looks good. It's oh, it looks good and it plays amazing. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's difficult, but yeah, but that's you can nice. get there. Yeah, but a challenge. Uh, let me think if I have some more questions. I think I've already asked everything I should ask you, so cool. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. Oh, thank you. Maybe we'll see each other again next time. I imagine so. I imagine there will be other press tours. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, Gameaholics, this is it for this interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to press the thumbs up button. And if you have any suggestions or comments, post them in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, now is your time to do that. And uh, when, you, when you have done that, you will get notified when I post new content on the channel. Well, as I mentioned, this is it for this video. And until next time, have fun and stay safe. Bye.